One of the issues uh, with the Suron and the RST Killa forks is that they get pretty dirty uh, in here and they lose their uh, the lubrication internally. So what we're going to do today is take a look at removing the lowers and lubing those up. Uh, while I'm at it, I think I'm going to put some new seals on as well as some I think you call them felts on the inside. So um, we're gonna start, believe it or not, by uh, turning the bike upside down. The cool thing about these electric bikes is that you don't have to worry about fluids and sometimes it makes it easier to work on them. So we're gonna get to that right now. To say thank you to Trevor at Reese Racing, that's R-I-S-S-E, R-A-C-I-N-G, Reese Racing. Uh, I had some questions about the RST Killa Fork and um, they are a Killa dealer and uh, represent Killa in the United States and Trevor is a wealth of information. If you have anything that you need done, I highly recommend you working with uh, Reese Racing because they really know what they're doing. You can see the bike is upside down now and what we're going to be doing first off is removing the the front brake uh, I will put a shim in here once I remove it that's done by just taking off this uh, Allen bolt these two Allen bolts removing that I'll put a shim in those uh, brakes to kind of keep them apart in case they accidentally want to come together uh, and then I'll take the wheel off uh, by taking off the axle and uh, then we'll go about on about uh, taking off the uh, the lowers okay, so we'll take take off the, the brakes probably should have a different allen wrench here because it's going to slow me down here a little bit because it's a little bit bigger than I need or actually <laughs> as all the other wrenches as well with it. Oop. I guess. The bike definitely looks different upside down. Everything looks backwards now. Oops, there we go. I'm going to pull that out and let that hang. I said I'd like to put a, a, a brake shim in there. I'm not going to do it right this instant. I'm going to do that when I turn off the camera for the next segment. But now that the bike is upside down, um, this cap uh, is typically on the right side of the bike. It's not on the left side, but this turns, um, instead of turning, uh, tightening clockwise, uh, it actually um, tightens opposite but to loosen it we actually go clockwise to loosen this cap it's very strange what looks like screwing it in is actually taking it out there's the cap and what we'll do is we'll take this one off here now this one this one is typically on the left side of the bike this one screws in normally and we'll take this wheel off. Actually, there's a pretty good amount of grease on there, which is good. And we pop that out. And set that to the side. And it screws in like backwards, but we'll just leave that there. So anyway, there we have our forks. Um, this is the, the rebound adjuster and this is the um, the other side of the fork and I'm going to grab the tools for those. Okay, first on this side on the rebound adjustment side there's a Phillips head screw that you have to remove. I'm going to take it all the way off. I'm going to pull that out here and then this cap should pull right off.
seven of you fallen asleep so far, so f I apologize. That's nice and dirty underneath there. And then we're going to also loosen this one up. This one's a little bit different and unique, but we'll loosen this one up and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, once I pull it apart here, you have to kind of get it to release from an inside uh, shaft that's threaded uh, uh, on the uh, inside of the lower. Um, and we're going to use a tool here. Uh, first, I'm going to clean it up and we'll use some, some I think, uh, uh, a wrench here to, to get this part off is a 10 millimeter uh, you do not want to damage the adjuster uh, part of this so you definitely have to kind of work around it and just un unscrew that and that will just pop right off of there no problem set that here and on this side just loosen this up now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on that with a hammer uh, and see if I can get that leg to, to release and come off. Oop, looks like it's going to come off for me automatically without worrying about it. Looks like it kind of it popped off for me easily without worrying about it. Um, so, oops, I forgot to actually take off the, uh, the brake here. So let me take that off, the uh, cable holder, and uh, we'll come right back with you. All right, so... Uh, I took off the cable holder and as you can see these are the lowers uh, what we're most interested in I'll try to get to some sunlight here maybe able to see a little bit better what we're most interested in is how mucky this stuff is down in here as well as the ring because that's what really kind of binds up the fork quite a bit um, you'll notice that there are uh, some grooves here and that's where the felt rings go and uh, I've never done it before but what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can not get these uh, seals off and replace them and also replace uh, and put the, the felt the uh, felt rings back in but it's a good idea to clean up in there so that's what we're gonna do one thing I want to note is um, on this side of the lower uh, there are two plastic rings that also come off and those have to go back on uh, you'll notice that they're kind of like down in there a little bit but those have to I have to pull those out and those have to go back on before we put that tube back in so hopefully you'll be able to see those two two rings in there and I'm going to grab those and we'll we'll show you when we put it back together and here's what uh, those plastic rings look like that I just pulled out of fished out of there I'm going to clean these up um, notice that this ring goes on the bottom and this one goes on the top once we put everything back together so uh, we'll show you that when we get to there I gotta clean my fingers now okay now that I have the fork off um, and in the vise uh, I'm going to clean uh, down into the tube here uh, and I'm going to pop off this seal I have some replacement seals and I've never done that before, but what I've seen is a couple of people on the internet basically just take a wrench and get up underneath there like that and then kind of give it a good give it a good pop. And I'm a little bit afraid of doing it. So I don't want to ruin it. suckers in they're pretty good oh you know what I forgot to take the ring off let me get that Ooh, let me get the spring off of here I don't know if that matters or not but I doubt it matters that looks like I looks like I messed up the spring okay um, because I'd never done this before I was a little bit nervous about it so I ended up just kind of uh, staying at the very top but with the replacement you can see that it's actually fairly deep and if you're using the wrench Got to get pretty low to get underneath and get the uh, the harder section there if you can see that um, and uh, what I did was I used the wrench I got underneath there underneath the harder section and I popped that uh, I'm sorry under bad video angle sorry I got underneath the uh, the harder part and popped it off okay <laughs> 
I keep uh, giving you guys a really bad angle. Try that again. So just get underneath the harder part of the ring and, and pop that off. It takes a little bit of guts to do it. Uh, I'm going to do that on the other side here as well. And uh, I'm going to clean this area up uh, here with the rag as, as, as well as I can. Okay, so I popped off the seals. And I need to clean the inside of those fork tubes. So here's what I do, which is probably not the best of ideas is I kind of poke this down, don't get the drill going otherwise, right? Poke this down so it's kind of like through there and then basically I kind of keep it up high and I'll sort of run this. Feel free to put how impressed you are in the comments. And I also do that on the other side as well. Now I bought the RST 36 millimeter seal kit from Reese Racing here, uh, 20 bucks. Give them a call. Um, I also was curious whether the 36 uh, millimeter seal kits would work, just the general generic ones uh, from uh, Amazon that I purchased. And they also come with the uh, felt wipers, which I think is important. Um, and I'm going to probably use these and see how they work. Now I've seen many people install the felt wipers with oil to help lubricate them. And while the RST is only in uh, an air shock, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of hydraulic jack oil, which is for suspension systems and stuff. And kind of just kind of make them be a little bit extra lubed up for when I put them in uh, I don't know that it'll hurt obviously there's going to be some grease in there but I'm going to lube, lube those up a little bit kind of let those get saturated and then I'm going to put the uh, the seals in actually those are pretty well saturated already so then I'm going to let me stick this here these are actually, I just don't want to get them bit dirty so Actually, let me just stick them there, and uh, I'm going to put these seals in here first. Oops, look at that. There's a little washer that just popped off. we got to figure out what that is for. Okay, I have some uh, slick oleum here. Um, I think that washer, by the way, I think that was uh, uh, just the, uh, the one that you put over the fork to measure uh, how far your forks go. Hopefully, I don't know that it, I don't know that it goes inside the seal. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put a little bit, little bit of slick oleum uh, on these uh, seals before I put them in, uh, just to kind of help them go in easier. And try to keep these clean. It's funny, my bench is not the cleanest in the world. But we'll put a little bit of that on there and we'll see if we can get these, these seals um, back into the forks here. So I'll do that by hand and catch you on the other side. Okay, you might want to um, look on the internet how best to install forks back, I'm sorry, seals back into the forks. Uh, what I'm going to do is I actually have this rubber uh, piece and uh, I'm going to, let's see, get that dirt out of there, oh boy, I cleaned it up. I'm going to use this to kind of uh, snick it down in uh, evenly on all sides and it's going to take a little bit of maneuvering I think to kind of get it down but uh, the key will be notice how it's raised on this side basically you want to notice how it's raised on this side sorry uh, but you want to make sure that that seals uh, flat so I'm going to kind of continue pulling this out and kind of reworking it uh, see if I can get that in there see if I can get that back in by reworking it I uh, have the new seals in as you can see I do need to clean a little bit more around uh, this area here um, to be careful that the dirt doesn't go in there I'm going to clean this up uh, a little bit more but the new 35 millimeter uh, generic seals are in hopefully they'll work okay on the bike and they'll fit on okay uh, now I'm going to put in the um, the felt uh, pieces uh, rings uh, in here so I'll probably do one to make sure I know how to do it then I'll film it on the other side 
show you what I'm talking Actually, you know, before I do that, I have to grease everything up. I'm going to use some of the slick oleum and uh, kind of lube everything up in here kind of nice and uh, nice and slick. So we'll give that a shot. One of the issues that I think we have with the Saran and these shocks is that they get dirty very quickly when you're riding through a lot of mud and dirt. And I had a crazy idea of some fork boots that are inner tubes that uh, I think are, I think 195. They come standard on the bike, but this one actually had a hole in it, so I kept it. But I'm gonna actually put this on and see if this might, these uh, inner tubes might act as legitimate fork boots to keep the forks dry. And it'll be interesting to see what that looks like on the end of the video, so stay tuned. I put one of the felt rings in this fork, as you can see, uh, and I'm going to stick it in this one in this side. Just want to make sure that it's flat. Stick it in there. And rub, run your finger around there to kind of put it where it's supposed to be. Sometimes you got to play around it a little bit. Other people do this much more graciously than I do for sure and let's see here okay, so it looks like I got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bump in there okay, work it around make sure it's flat make sure it's flat all the way around and stuck to the side as much as we can all right, well, that actually, with the hydraulic fluid, that actually cuts through that grease pretty well. I hope I did the right thing uh, using the uh, hydraulic fluid as a lubricant. So that's uh, the seals. These are ready to stick on. By the way, um, I wanted to show you the old seals that I took out of the RST. This one was actually, actually uh, in pretty good shape. Uh, this one was really, really mangled in there. As you can see, it's uh, probably not doing a whole lot of good and probably potentially binding the fork up too. So that's why I thought it was important to put some new felt seals uh, into the uh, uh, lowers. And the way you stick these on is you put these on like this and you fit those straight over the shocks and then you have to kind of maneuver them to make sure you get those on there correctly. I'm going to lube that up a little bit, and I'm going to see if I can get these forks, uh, uh, lowers, I should say, back on the forks. Aha! But don't forget to put these in first on the, on the left side, and also this here, because otherwise uh, it won't center to pull this on. So. Just a little tip before you go further. The two washers have to go on first. Okay, we have success in that this came through the hole, which is awesome. Uh, and the female threaded rod is right there. So I'll be able to put that nut on there pretty quickly. Um, the one thing that centers this rod so that this lines up with the hole is that washer there's a heavier washer that will uh i'm sorry a thicker washer that goes uh, lower here that you'll see when you pull it apart uh, it kind of mates with the upper part of the shock this lower washer is kind of what helps seats this in the middle here so before i put this back on i push that washer all the way to the bottom of this lower so that i could line up the holes of the female threaded rod here. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to thread this. And if so, we'll be in good shape. Okay. Oh, oop, there we go. Yep, I'm able to thread that, which is good. Then I'll put the nut on this side and uh, we'll be able to put everything back together and give it a try. So I have the, uh, the screw here threading into the rod 
fact that it tightens up makes me happy. I'm going to go too terribly tight with this because you might want to undo that at one point. And if that rod is really locked in there hard, this will not be easy to, to get off. But then we're going to take uh, the nut here. And let's see, it's hex on this side. So we're going to put that on here like this. And get the crust, trusty wrench. And I don't know what how tight you want that, but I'm going to just kind of snug up there. And I think we're good. I'm going to put the, the cap back on. Oh, actually, I'm going to clean that cap first. The screw just dropped out. I'm going to clean that cap out first, and uh, we'll put that back on. There you have it. Um, I put it back together. Um, it, I have it well oiled, and uh, we're going to give it a ride tomorrow on the trails, see how it works out. Um, you will remember I put some inner tubes as uh, uh, some fork boots. But they were way too grippy they actually the concept was reasonable but uh the rubber just uh stuck to the to the uh, stanchions uh too much and basically rode up pretty quickly it's interesting if there was a drier alternative to rubber that was flexible um, but would also not um, stick uh to the uh to the stanchions but anyway We'll give it a try tomorrow. I'm hoping that this helped uh, you at least to know what's inside your forks. Uh, RST Killer Killa forks. And again, thank you. Special thanks to the services provided by Trevor at Reese Racing. If you don't want to go through this, uh, he knows a lot uh, more than I do, and he's quite good. Uh, give those guys a call, and you'll be happy you did. But uh, anyway, uh, I have to put my cable keeper back on and I think I'll be just about ready to go so anyway thanks for watching um, I'm not a professional videographer as you can tell so my apologies feel free to leave any comments below and uh, thanks for watching